this town hall will be recorded and it's also live streamed uh, on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you are joining us from there, you can ask questions at the end by putting a comment or a question into the comment section. And Brock Parker is monitoring all of them. So he will relay your questions to Mike. And I will start the recording now. And I will hand it over to Mike Romilly. Good morning, everybody. I really appreciate that you all took time out of y'all's busy schedule to kind of learn about what the uh, Global Water Center is going to be. What I'd like to first kind of do to, as Stephanie said, kind of some housekeeping is, is I was going to show uh, kind of where we're at with the strategic plan. And that way I can show my part uh, towards the end so that you can um, uh, have plenty of time to be able to ask questions. Except I didn't, give me just a second. Um, does everybody see my screen on the slides? Yes, okay. Um, so the first thing I'd like to talk about and is where we're at with the um, strategic plan. We're in step three right now, uh, today, um, and kind of showing you where we're at. Um, Again, you know, this is our glide slope to be able to go out and, and, and show everybody what we're kind of working on. Um, on, the set, on the next slide, um, um, we, we are um, at the, uh, we sent out to six different people that you see on the kind of the core team. Our next hope after this particular uh, presentation is send it out to a wider group. We have 10 additional people that uh, we'll be sending this um, information out to to get their comments on the on the strategic plan. Um, I think the, the group of six that you see on the left hand side has been extremely helpful shaping the strategic plan. And I believe we probably got it about an 85 percent solution set on the um, strategic plan. And, and our hopes is, is that, again, by Christmas, that we'll get it out to lots of people and start beginning to finalize it. Um, that's kind of the quick and dirty on the strategic plan. Does anybody have any comments on the strategic plan and kind of where we're at right now? If not, um, I'll begin kind of my portion of it. Um, so kind of introduce myself a little bit more. Um, I just retired from the Air Force after 27 years. Um, and uh, in that time, I had the opportunity to be involved in a lot of policy um, and decision-making for the Air Force and for DOD and for the national security community. Um, uh, I had the opportunity to be involved in a lot of White House um, uh, initiatives, uh, both in congressional initiatives that help kind of shape who I am and what, what I do. And so a lot of this, what I'm presenting you to the town hall today is kind of what, um, the lessons, the, the, the school of hard knocks and everything that I've, let, I've learned over the last uh, several years um, in, in the policy arena on the importance of this Global Water Security Center. We are at a unique opportunity to, to stand this up because there's really nothing out there. And I can tell you at least from the political, the geopolitical perspective, there's lots of folks out there that are really wanting this center to succeed because there's really not a place out there, even within the world, that looks at uh, water from a security perspective. And it's not just a militaristic perspective, it's also a human security. And, and to me, that's probably the most important with societal benefits. So this next um, uh, presentation will kind of go with what I, where I am. So what is this center going to be? And there's some words on there, and I highlighted a few in red. Um, it's really going to be an applied research and operational center that'll help enhance the knowledge. And one of the things I've learned throughout my career is, is the communication of science as we all struggle with. So the hope of my center is to, to take the best of the state of the art research, bring it into my center and begin to run algorithms to again, enhance the knowledge of decision makers, policy makers on all the aspects of water and the importance of water. Uh, in particular, the key stakeholders for, uh, at least for initially for this 
This, this center would be DOD, the intelligence community, Coast Guard, and there's other people down there. But how do we have a strategic conversation about water and so that we as a nation can um, mitigate and adapt uh, to different various water uh, impacts throughout the world? And you can kind of see all the different ones that I listed. And each one kind of strikes probably each one of your all's research um, levels. So this is, I put this up uh, as an example of some of the questions throughout my career that I've been asked and continue, unfortunately, not able to really be able to answer um, to sufficient, or at least to my uh, satisfaction. Um, and, and, and it's sad that even in the 21st century, we can't um, do this. So like in the upper right-hand corner, I wrote what an anomalous could conditions may arise to cause food or water security concerns. You know, I've gotten questions about the Chinese and, and some of the things that they've been working on, uh, you know, is, you know, just, just a few months ago, uh, the Three Rivers Gorges Dam almost collapsed because of too much water. And what would that be, the impact to the downrange and to the Mekong River Valley? But these are just some of the questions that, again, through the course of my career being on the operational side, that they, they may be in academia and have been researched, but to be able to quickly and easily be able to answer decision-making questions, I struggled on in the Air Force being able to answer State Department questions or USAID questions or and, and DOD questions on a lot of these kinds of things. And these are just areas that each one of you have, a, again, research. And I know that, you, you know, um, do you know you have the expertise in so what i want to do with the center is and have the ability to do research to operations is bring we do, we admire the science a lot and we do science and then we put it on a shelf and then we never bring it to a reliable and continuous ability to answer the questions no matter what day they come to us and so my hope for my center is have the ability to uh, be able to answer these questions when decision makers and policy makers are able to um, ask us questions. The next thing is, is kind of how do I view water security? And from my perspective um, is that, you know, water is kind of the center of this complex web that um, we look at environmental security issues. If we can better articulate and communicate both the social processes and the physical processes of, of, of this information, then we can be able to expand out to help people understand food security or energy security or human security. In my opinion, I think today um, data is sufficient. Uh, I think we have enough data to begin this conversation, but I'm also one of these people that I'd rather have a 20% uh, answer today rather than waiting 30 years for an 80% solution. And, and so my hope is, is with the center, as, as we begin to build it and, and use y'all's expertise, is, is let's grab the low hanging fruit that's easy now. And then as we, as the center becomes more established and, and we work with the faculty and you, you provide advisory services and we take some of your research and fund some of your research, is then how do we begin to expand this complex network of information so that folks can kind of understand what's going on. This, in particular, I'm, I'm giving, now going to give you some examples. In particular, I was asked by the National Security Council prior to COP, uh, the, um, the Paris COP, to look, take a look at India. And so these are some information that I provided. I actually wrote a nine-page white paper for the National Security Council to inform them on how to write the Paris Accords and, and, and a lot of that kind of work. And so these are some of the data sets that I provided them to give them a perspective on, on India and the struggles that they have. And a lot of people may or may not know, you know a lot about India, but if you notice that some of those points that 70% you know, of their annual rainfall comes from monsoon. So if the monsoon is delayed or not as strong, it can have a really adverse impact on their ability to do farming. And again, the point is, is that 60% of the population relies on that subsistence farming. 
The other thing too is if you notice how quickly the population of India is exploding from 1965 is just a half a million, a half a billion people. And by 2050 is expected to be about 1.6 billion. So how does that finite resource of water and you know whether it's clean or not, how, how, is, how is India going to be able to cope in the future? So a couple of things that I, that again, I presented, I presented four different particular sets to the National Security Council. I'm showing two on here, and then I'll show two on the next slide. You know, as a water security, you know, as you guys are probably aware, you know, a lot of the headwaters come from China, especially the Ganges, Bhumipatra River Basin, and the importance of it. Right now in India, the current average per capita availability of water is, you know, 1,600 meters, cube meters per year. And again, as you guys know, according to the UN, you know, water scarcity becomes when it's below a thousand. And they are really expecting with the increase of population to, you know, that India in the future could be really close to having water scarcity for all their personnel. And again, food security, again, water in the bottom right hand corner with, you know, the, the rice and everything. A lot of people have died since 1850 because of drought. Um, and so how do we begin to, within my center, how do we begin to tell the story sufficiently enough instead of, again, in my perspective, a lot of times we do hindsight being 2020, how can we tie water and food security so that nations like India and even our own, um, you know, would be able to uh, have conversations at the policy level. The last thing, uh, the last two items that I presented to them is, you know, health security. Um, you know, because of frequent floods and sea level rise, you know, it really leads to that degradation of waterborne infectious diseases. And, and it really impacts a country like India. And if we can't articulate it in a sufficient manner uh, on it, then how to, and again, my intent is to this center as we mature to be able to reach out into the health security. And then energy security, you know, it, they get a lot of water. They use a lot of their um, hydropower to be able to do energy security. And 40% of the nation right now doesn't have access to electricity. And again, again, my hope is, is to build charts and build explanations on how can I describe these that's easily able to communicate with policymakers and others and begin to have these world discussions on these particular issues. So why does the federal government care? Um, you know, you, there may be at times that you really don't think that the federal government really cares about this, but this is the uh, World Economic Forum Global Risk Report. And as you notice, I kind of highlighted them, you know, extreme weather, natural disasters, human-made environmental disasters, and water crisis. All, three, all four of those have cracked the top 10 on the World Economic Forum. And they've been there for quite some time as they try to articulate and I believe, in my opinion, that you know, because of reports like the, the this global risk report, and there's many others that that again, I think there's an awakening of, and and again, that's why a lot of people, at least in the Washington D.C. area and others, are extremely excited about the ability to um, look at this kind of information. So, what do I need from you guys? Um, you know, I can get, I can bring the operational and decision policy perspective. Again, that's what Scott and I have uh, took a lot of time uh, fostering over the several years. But uh, what I need from you guys is, you know, honest feedback. Where do you think this center could go? I will admit that I'm uh, humble enough that I don't know everything, but I need y'all to give me ideas. You know, I, in my personal goal, I want this university to be the global leader in water security issues. I know it'll take time. I'm gonna get, uh, gonna get some DOD money as kind of the base, but based on the ideas that you guys provide me and the expertise that you guys deal in your professional lives, I want to be able to build a yearly investment program, start at the easy things first, and then begin to build our complexity so that we can become the global leader. And then the last thing I'd like to express is, you know, your support. Um, I, again, I don't have all the answers, 
Um, and, but I think working with y'all, uh, that I, you know, and, and the advice that you can give me, um, again, I can provide the operational perspective. I can, you know, I've been a decision maker. I fought the policy wars in Washington, DC. So I can bring that perspective and we can challenge each other to help again, make us the best. The last thing I have on here, um, is, is that I'd like to hire two undergrad students to kind of help shape this center and do some research for me before my congressional money uh, arrives. So if you guys have any kind of students that uh, would be interested in beginning to build the foundation of my center, uh, we've got money in the budget to hire these two students. So I, you know, would really like um, the ability for you to um, provide me some advice on some students that may be interested in working in this trade place. I know this is really quick and it's a very high level and you probably want a whole lot more detail than what I provided over the last 15 minutes. But again, I, I really wanted to kind of go through this quickly so that um, you know we can have more of a conversation and I'd like to hear about um, from you. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm really gonna open this up because I wanna hear from y'all. Okay, oh, Mike, this is Prabhakar. Yes. Thank you, sir. I really enjoyed your talk. So I'm gonna ask a really global um, philosophical question here, okay? Okay. So, um, yes, great. Um, so here I am, I'm a tenure track professor. I have to get tenure in another three, three years. And I got two students. How can I help you now? And how can you guys can help me now so I can build a, a research program in my own group. So what, what should I do? How do we approach you? So here's how I kind of view my center. My intent is, is, um, is to build a water portal and, and begin to collect information so that you guys don't have to go out and search for 15,000 different sources to begin to build the information. So I plan to use some of my money to build this water portal that would give you better access to information. So that's part A. The second thing that I would like to offer from my center would be the ability to, uh, if you have algorithms that you believe can make a world changing difference and, and, and can, we can visualize it, I, again, I would take some of my money and begin to operationalize your, your, your research. And it, and, it, and it serves two purposes, as you kind of heard me earlier, you know, the 20% now, I'd like to do spiral development on algorithms and, and things, knowing it won't be perfect, but allow my center to kind of be your test bed to see how and get this feedback back so that, you know, if, if it's not right perfect, at least we'll get feedback back from the communities and say, no, this is what we would prefer to have. And again, it would allow us to improve our our research and our and and again at the same time my operational and I kind of be this shield for the university to allow this openness and 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 trial periods of algorithms and that way your students would be able to have operational impact at the same time improving their skill sets and their knowledge and and maybe even exposing them to you know I was talking to Dean Carr yesterday looking above the equations and seeing that your section of, of equations is actually making greater impacts to the world and to the humanity. And so this center would allow your students and yourself to be able to maybe connect the dots and understand a bigger picture of water security. Does that make sense? Thanks. Um, hello, Mike, uh, this is Ransom. Uh, Ransom AK from Health Science Department. Uh, that was a great presentation. And um, I was also very pleased to see that you have health, you know, as one of your focus, you know, in these, uh, in, uh, in your center. And I've been a member of AWI for quite a while. And uh, one of my major concern is that uh, most times we, I hear presenters talk about the health you know, ties to, you know, water, but I don't see a lot going forward in terms of what's the agenda, you know, in terms of incorporating health into 
the research activities of the center. And I know people that have been in AWI for a while probably would have heard me say this over and over again. So I want to hear from you, what's your agenda incorporating health research, you know, uh, uh, at, at, you know, at your center? So uh, that aspect of it, so I, I, I'm going to relay a military perspective again, that's kind of, you know, we, when I was in the military, we'd send people and it could be USAID, you know, people to, um, you know, to military people, to NGOs, to everybody else, to every spot of the world. And, you know, they could be walking in a hot zone of a Rift Valley fever or the plague or, you know, things like more closer to our home, you know, Zika and, and Chickamauga and some of those others. And what I would like to build with the health, you know, as I build this environmental security perspective to the center is, is, is there how do we connect and, and, and I'll use the term kind of provide a watches and warning perspective that, hey, the climate and the environment is, is conducive for an explosion of an, uh, a cholera outbreak or, you know, pick, a, pick something. And I think I had the opportunity at a, at a NASA forum um, and it was about GPM and, and doing the remote sensing for GPM. And I, and I get frustrated personally uh, that lots of literature on environmental factors affecting health, but the, the two communities never work to couple their models together. And so my hope is, is to build a framework that we can legitimately um, begin to couple and begin to have this coupling and forcing and, and then providing the, this strategic advice on, on these two communities working together. So, you know, the weather, water coupling, working with communities like yours to begin to have this dialogue that there is these environmental factors that, that force uh, disease outbreaks and, you know, I think there's a, actually, if I remember right reading, just there's a, a couple of cases of the plague even in the United States just recently. But the hope is, is that to force these conversations in these communities to work together. And then my center would be this potential place so that we could all work together. Um, and again, I can't tell you how many times, again, from the, my past where I was asked questions, you know, about, there was an earthquake in Haiti, you know, they just had that hurricane that went over them and there was like massive cholera outbreak, you know, and they would turn to me and, and what say you? And I could, I would just have to shrug, you know, and then I'd go to NIH and CDC and try to work all those angles. And let's be honest, all they cared is, ah, I'm worried about heat islands in Chicago. And so um, I was frustrated with, you know, the trying to work these angles of, human or health security issues. And again, my intent is as I build this complex environmental security centers, begin to have these communities work together to kind of articulate. And it'll be simple at first, you know, and I understand the complexity, but it would give them a, it would give a community like yours a forum to be able to be front and center instead of relying on NIH and CDC. And in fact, I've been whispered in my ear that uh, there may be some law for an infectious pandemic center being created because they're frustrated with CDC right now. Um, so just just to realize that there's some awakening, I guess, in this trade space. Uh, Thank you. Uh, this is Kasra Melmeni from Mechanical Engineering Department. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, like the technologies related to uh, water in, in terms of your uh, center. I heard a lot about uh, policies and I think that's going to be your main focus. But how about technologies and like uh, the solutions that we can maybe offer or develop in order to address those issues? So I, my hope, um, and again, looking forward to advice from, from everybody on there, I think what the center will do is expose that there are major gaps in whether it's from technology um, to science, just pure science to policy. So I'm, I'm 
not, you hear me say policy, but I think this center will allow us to have conversations that, you know, like remote sensing, if I'm going to take it at a global perspective, you know, countries look at water information as national security perspectives. And so I recognize that remote sensing and technologies is going to be able to have to fill in my gaps of information. And so I, I, a, a center like this will allow a conversation to go, oh, we really don't have enough stream flow gauges in, in, the, in the United States and that I need to fill this technology gap if I'm supposed to answer this question. And it will, and then again, the center will allow me to expose uh, to people that will give you money to, to do technology and to be this agnostic center of arbiter of, see, I told you that we're shortfall on, on technology. So that's, that's the intent of the center is, is to kind of be a conversation piece to allow, you know, your concern in particular. So it's like more like an alarming system for, for the politicians to hear us. Yes, I, I believe so. I'll be the, you know, the kind of, you know, voice um, irritant, if you will, right? Um, to say, see, look, we, we do have a deficiency in your subject. And here, let's have an open conversation because I have the data. I have, the, we have the expertise with, within the university and let us show you and then how we can help you fix that capability gap, policy gap or whatever. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mike, this is uh, Sagi Cohen. Um, I just want to continue on this little, uh, the discussion you, you started with Provacar um, and uh, Ransom. Um, so one of, one of the great things that, that the center can bring uh, and the Institute can bring uh, from a leadership perspective is, as, and you identify that as well, is to um, try to facilitate this uh, interdisciplinary and multi-scale research, uh, because as you know, in, in science today, we're all very, very much focused on one thing, right? We can't really be very broad in what we can specialize in. So uh, as someone who do global scale uh, analysis and quite, you know, there's not a lot of people who do that, uh, and, but understand that you need to collaborate with people who do local scale or more small scale focus uh, uh, research that discussion has always been uh, difficult in many cases uh, because there's this disconnect and obviously it, it gets even worse when you start thinking about uh, interdisciplinary. Uh, so, you know, you, the biological, the social, the economic implication of what you're, tr you're trying to connect. So what I'm saying, I don't really have a question, but uh, to reiterate and said that your leadership uh, can, can try to facilitate that that will be a big, a big step. But again, going back to what Prabhakar said, um, that's, that's a challenge that you know, we've seen a lot of people try and not always succeed. And that's because uh, you know, we need to have the benefit straight away almost, uh, or, or yeah, pretty close to straight away because we are all driven by that next paper, that next grant, that next student. Um, and we don't have a, have a lot of bandwidth to, to explore, uh, especially if, um, you know, this thing has been going on for a while. So uh, basically, good luck, that's why. <laughs> well, no, you know, it, it is a challenge and, and I recognize that it's not going to be easy, um, but um, dang it, I'm gonna get a, get a good old boy try. You know, I, I think, at least at the center level, again, because I'm going to get DOD funding as kind of the as base funding. Um, the hope is, is that uh, at my level, um, I can do the interconnections and then and then feedback that feedback and have this collaboration capability across the different disciplines. So, you know, while you may be siloed in some aspect at my level, my intent is then to begin how do I put these puzzle pieces together so that I take your expertise and like uh, um, Becky Manzoni's expertise and how do I, 
how do I begin to tell this story? And then if I'm off or whatever, but I want to facilitate discussions because this, and again, um, being a, you know, I'm going to charge up that hill, um, you know, using kind of a war analogy, I'm going to charge up that hill. And if I keep getting pushed down, I'm just going to pick back up and I'm going to charge again because I, in my whole heart of hearts, this has to be done and solved. We've made the pitch to con Congress and others. They feel that the time is right to have these conversations. And that's why they're willing to put money in to a center like mine. And again, not going to be perfect, but I think this awakening and this desperate need of, of trying this and, and I'm the dude that they picked to try to charge that hill. I'm going to do it. And again, I may get bruised and bloodied along the way, but that's my intent is, is how do we, how do we go on and do what you're describing? Mike, um, so I think Sagi made an interesting point. Well, I just want to add, so you should really think about a time scale problem here, okay? So as you build this thing for a two year, maybe five year vision, there is, I mean, as a faculty, I mean, I'm going, I'm going to put myself as a tenure track faculty, right? Which means they will fire me after four years if we don't bring in money and produce. That, that's a reality I am in, right? So I am, when I look at you, from that perspective, I'm looking, how can you uh, help my survival? To some extent, it's kind of capitalism, right? You, right. you work at the, the bottom scale, so somehow this magic hand will bring this wealth to the rest of the nation type of deal, right? So the question is, even currently, I would like to see, for example, your undergraduate student, I would like to see you actually reach out to a professor and link with the research so that you're actually helping a, a, a professor to have a, he can retain them, he can build their career, and they feel comfortable working with you. So as you build, it'll be nice to have a small time steps where you're still building this relationship and helping tenure track faculty to build their career. And that, I think that will go a long way. And that was kind of missing uh, so far from, uh, from a big okay. picture point of view. Oh, I appreciate it. I also want to stress, uh, just because no one else is, is talking, that I, I didn't intend to sound uh, negative or in any way. Uh, I just, um, yeah, just, just recognizing the challenges. But the fact that you had over 40 people turn out to this call, it shows that you have a lot of goodwill uh, among the, the faculty uh, at that university, which is great. So, well, again, uh, have a really good start. Not, again, not a fair, not afraid of arrows. I mean, the better, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? And so the more constructive and sometimes negative, I'm okay with that too, comments, again, will help this center succeed. So I, again, if you, I'm not worried about, I, I didn't perceive your comments as negative whatsoever. I just, it is iron sharpening iron. And that's what I need from you and the advice and, and everything. And, you know, uh, Dr. Clement's comments and others, you know, I definitely want, you know, those kinds of comments for sure. Uh, Molly John also had a, uh, a question for you. Hi, um, uh, let me just quickly introduce myself. I'm Molly John. I'm not at University of Alabama. I'm at University of Wisconsin, also with a faculty appointment at University of Illinois. And I may actually have the benefit of having known Mike quite a bit longer than many of the rest of you. I am thrilled to see Mike kicking the center off at the University of Alabama. Um, I think it's going to be um, a real opportunity. Um, I've listened to the conversation with a lot of interest. I do understand um, the tension in a way between a center like this that intends to have an impact in real life and be a resource um, to decision makers and um, those of you who are building academic careers. Um, but I think that um, I can I can say Mike I think stands literally in a singular position of all the people I've known in government. Mike is is has always been a go to for me when I've needed to bridge between research and operations. So um, I'm a food security, food system security, stability type person. 
um, this is the center I can find in government and in academia. This is the only example of a center where I think I can bring um, some of the needs I have as well as the assets I have um, to, to bear on a operations research hybrid model that can handle the issues between domestic and international and global. There are so many boundaries through these subjects um, that are highly problematic bureaucratically. Um, and so I'm just really thrilled to see this center kicking off. You guys are so lucky to have Mike there doing this and to be the university that was smart enough to capture this. And um, I really want to just, I loved Mike's web graphic. We'll be using that graphic as well because um, I do think the, the promise here is a very substantial one, not just for Alabama, but really because this is the only center of its kind that I'm aware of in the United States, and I would probably know, um, I, I think it really represents um, a nationally unique resource that, um, that I, for one, am gonna be doing everything I can to back. And I'll mention one thing, um, I am on NASA contracts looking for opportunities for NASA to co-invest with other US government stakeholders. And I see this center as an opportunity um, to broker that conversation. Um, and we're really pleased that Mike will be uh, involved in a workshop we're holding that um, I hope he'll publicize for you on November 16th in the morning on some of the subjects that really relate to the food water nexus. So I'll just say, I'm super happy to um, see this happening. Um, you're very, very lucky. Um, as well as smart to have this happening at Alabama. And I think you're gonna find friends showing up from all around uh, to help both from government and from academia. And no, I did not pay her to be honest. He did not, he did not pay me. So. <laughs> so I, <laughs> but I'm, I'm thrilled to get an external input like this and, 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 and fantastic. I, I'm, I would love to see an external advisory committee like this, like Professor, Molly John, and I know Mary Anderson pretty well at Wisconsin, she, she's retired. But somebody like that, some retired emeritus people would come and beat us up. I think that's where we will learn a lot. So, so I'm, I'm thrilled to listen to your comment. Thank you so much for your time. So um, what, what, Molly's refer, what Molly's referring to is an at Atlantic Council, which is a, a very prestigious um, think tank that runs in the Washington DC circles. Um, been invited to come and speak to them uh, on, on the symposium that you that she's referring to. But thank you, Molly, for the kind words, even though I didn't pay you to do it. <laughs> I once asked, I'll just say this. I once asked Mike while we were interacting when he was in his um, Department of Defense roles, I said, Mike, what are we going to do if you ever leave? Like, is there anyone else like you out there? And he said, and he's right, no. So you're very lucky to have him. Um, I know that a number of people who are still in their government roles are watching this center with great um, interest and optimism. And I think you'll find it really becomes a national locus for a set of needs that are desperate. They're so big, they're so important, and yet we have not figured out how to meet them properly. And I think this center really represents a very exciting model um, for how we might do better. Uh, I don't just one, one thing, uh, Mike, I actually appreciate, um, I see a lot of potentials and in what you plan to do and I appreciate the personalized message uh, you sent to me that shows that you really want to work or get everyone involved in the process. And I think that's the right way to go. And um, I look forward to seeing what you bring to the table and I will hopefully get together and get this going and get the center also known or widely known everywhere. Appreciate that. Thank you. I want to share also that um, I've been a little bit quiet because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like being able to have the conversation with the folks that decided to help looking at the strategic plan. I had the opportunity to discuss a little bit with Scott and, and with, with Mike um, different ideas. 
And um, one of the roles that I carry is to represent the, the government in one of the councils for national infrastructure protection um, with DHS. And um, when you talk about those things, um, water is definitely one of the critical infrastructure systems. And a lot of the discussion moves from emergency management um, to um, kind of like a law enforcement piece, but the security as this center is being put together is something that definitely needs to be fed all the way back to these uh, types of consoles because the perspective of security is not always guns, but is the need to exist. So I, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to have, you know, uh, been participating with the overall group and I'm definitely looking forward to be able to work even more. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Swana. So uh, I just wanted, I'm Becky Manzoni from Geology and I just wanted to also express my excitement about this new center. Um, as you can see, I mean, there, as, as Siggy said, there's a lot of interest. There's a lot of existing synergy that we can capitalize on. And I'm really excited to learn from you how we can make our research actionable. It's something that we think a lot about, but I mean, honestly, as, as academics, we just don't have the expertise. So um, I'm really excited to learn from you and to, you know, help in whatever way we can from geology to, to try and make this a success. And that's, you know, I know y'all were putting together that, that Emily was putting together that plan and that you guys were submitting. And it, that's my goal is, is how do, how do we, you know, make it actionable? Um, and again, it's not going to be perfect from day one. I recognize that, but the intent is, is to do spiral development to continue to improve our science and the research that you guys do again to, and then at my level, then begin to champion y'all's work. Um, uh, in particular, you know, Becky, we were talking, you know, on the paleo record because it's in the importance. And what I was challenging Emily yesterday was, so what, you know, so my hope is, is to take those equations, challenge each of you on, uh, the so what, and then help begin to tease that so what out. And then again, if you can explain it to me, uh, the so what, um, then then the world benefits from it too. Maybe that's a grand plan, but that's at least the, the windmill that I'm chasing every day. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Okay. Um, again, I appreciate the university um, and the fact that you know they're willing to to give me a shot, Scott and I, to 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 improve the status um, of of uh, and the importance of water. Um, if you read the U.S. Uh, global water strategy that came out. Uh, that was was written. I was an, uh, one of the authors of that particular strategy. Um, Ambassador Salzburg, who works now at the University of North Carolina, was the main author of that particular document. Um, uh, there, you know, in there, um, the president made a comment that water will be the next generation's greatest challenge. It's right up front in the executive summary of that particular report, and I. And I truly believe that comment and that I think we at the university uh, can be one of those centers that are one of these uh, institutes, uh, university institutes that can definitely um, be able to help that, you know, as you guys are aware, you know, we got the National Water Center and Ed Clark's uh, support um, and then USGS up here in the hill behind us, you know, and, and I, I can tell you how many people are excited about the bill this center being stood up and then the research me engaging with the faculty on a daily basis and you guys again providing me the advice on what i need to do to 
to improve this center. So again, I appreciate y'all's time. I know you're busy uh, individuals. Uh, I'm excited that, um, that this many people decided to hear this unknown person that is an outsider. And again, appreciate your, your confidence in me. Um, drop me a note, uh, I'm more than happy to meet one-on-one, -on -one, learn from each one of you that's uh, you know, on this call. Uh, that's my intent. Uh, the hope is, is that by March or April, um, we'll get the money here um, within the university system. Um, there will be some aspects where the center, I will, um, my intent is to take y'all's algorithms and all your thing and immediately run it, put it on the web services and on the cloud. Um, not going to do anything hard iron. Um, all my, all the data repositories, all the algorithms will not be run on a, on a hardware uh, HPC. And so if I have to invest money to take your, your, your research and operationalize it and put it on to the cloud so that it's again exposed to, to your students to be able to run things and write papers off of them. My intent is to use some of my money to definitely do that. We'll also have people to uh, that will do programming and, and web development and all those kinds of things. Again, the intent of my money, again, is to take y'all's research and, 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 and make it and, and I'm skipping the hardware and, and going straight to the cloud. And then, as I mentioned earlier in the talk, to have this wet water portal as a kind of a broker of information. There's uh, Duke University has this thing called the Internet of Water that's just national base, but it's OK. Uh, but the intent is, is to do better than just OK in this. So again, I'm super excited to work with each one of you. Um, um, talking to Dr. Clements, you know, my hope is, is over the next several months is to begin to lay out a plan so that you, for transparency so that you guys can see what my thoughts are um, of what the center is and kind of year by year goals. So over the next several months, once I get work finished with the AWI strat plan is to kind of create my own plan so that you guys are transparent. Appreciate any feedback that you guys would give and what you'd like to see out of a center like this because it's just as important that you guys are bought in because it's your center i'm just kind of the head of it so again i appreciate everybody's comments um today and then and if you want to send me private comments that's okay too and again not afraid of of comments uh because again iron sharpens iron from my perspective so again thank you very much for all that you've done and you guys have a great rest of the day